Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are untangling ties once again. Hopefully, I haven't put you in too many knots in the last two videos, but we are going to forge ahead anyway and talk about tie contours. So once again, back to the document options, and in the bottom right corner, we're going to click the tie contour button to get to the tie contour options. Now, just like the main part of the document options for ties, there is a reset button. And again, this will just reset all of the settings here back to the factory settings. Again, nothing has been changed yet, so reset doesn't do anything. But once I get going, you'll see me using that to reset back to these settings. Now, let's start on the upper left. You have the, the span settings for short, medium, and long. The span is literally the length of the tie from left to right, right? And Finale is basically defining three different types of spans. There's a short span, a medium span, and a long span. This has to do with these options over here in the uh, uh, for the height and insets. You can change the height and insets for the short, medium, and long ties differently, and I'll get to that in a second. But it's important to realize that what Finale is doing is basically defining the short short um, uh, tie as being a tie that's 0.6 inches or shorter. It's defining the long tie as being two inches or longer. Now it's defining the medium tie as being one inches, but there's another option on the bottom right um, that really affects the medium length span, which I'll talk about. So interpolate height between short and long spans is currently selected, but there's also this other option for use medium height between short and long spans. And with this option checked, right, again, we're going to have different heights and insets for the short, medium, and long. With this option checked, what it's saying is that any tie that's between the short and long length, so anywhere between 0.6 and 2 inches, that tie is going to use the settings precisely that are set for the medium tie height and insets, right? So if the tie is 0.8 inches long, the height is going to be exactly 0.125. If the tie is 1.5 inches long, the height is going to be exactly 1, uh, 0.125, right? With the other option, interpolate height between short and long spans, basically any medium tie is defined as any tie that's you know longer than 0.6 but shorter than 2, and it's going to interpolate the height between the short and medium height, and then again between the medium and long height. So if the tie length is, let's say, 0.8, which is halfway between uh, the short and the medium, right, it's going to use a tie height that's halfway between 0 0.0625 and 0 0.125, right? It's going to interpolate between those two values. If the tie length happens to be 1.5, it's going the height is going to be halfway between the medium height, which is 0 0.125, and the long height, which is set to 0 0.173. Does that make sense? So effectively what happens is that the when you have this option checked, the heights gradually get higher as you go from the short to the long span, right? If you use the medium height between short and long span, then it's more of like a, a stepped system. So you have the short height for a while, and then you have the medium height for a while, and then you have the long height for a while. Um, this is just a different way of doing it, but you would get literally three different heights of ties for every single tie. Regardless of which option you have, if the tie happens to be shorter than 0.6, it will just use the short uh, tie height. It's not going to get lower than that. So there's sort of like this floor uh, on the height for the short tie. Same thing with the long tie. If the long tie happens to be longer than two inches, it's not going to get higher than the settings here. So there's also a maximum height set at the long span, if that makes sense. Now, you can change these span values if you want, but doing so is a, it's very subtle. It has very subtle changes. Um, maybe if you change the long one to something really long and you have the interpolate height between short and long spans, what you're going to do is you're going to get a much more gradual type of increase in the height between the short and long span, and it's going to take a long time to actually get to the uh, long span value. I mean, three inches is actually a pretty long tie. Um, so you may actually never get to this height of the long tie. So um, that would be one way to do it. Now, let's start talking about the heights and the insets, right? So again, you have your short, medium, and long uh, tie style, and you can change the height and inset uh, for each of those. Now, let me just briefly talk about this option here for tie end and also this option here. These tie end is something that has to do with an old version of Finale. Um, this is really only needed if you're opening a file from before Finale 97, 
you should use the tie end with this option checked really has no use in the modern versions of Finale, so I'm not even going to get into it much further. I'm just going to tell you to ignore the tie end settings. Um, we're just going to deal with the short, medium, and long styles. Now let me get a little bit more into the height and the inset. So the height is not the actual height of the tie. You would think that that's what it would be, but it's actually the height of the control point. If you look at this little graphic here, you have these little handles. And indeed, these handles will show up in the special tools for the tie tool, and you can manipulate these handles, and those are the exact same control points. Basically, what these uh, settings are doing is it's kind of placing those control points at certain points. So the height of the left and the right control point is what these values are. It's not the height of the tie itself. It's the height of the control point. Same thing with the inset. And there is two options. You have this inset style for percent and fixed. When it's set to percent, again, it's insetting from the end of the tie. So on the left side, that means it's insetting to the right about 20%. So if you think about it, it's 20% along the length of the tie. That's going to be a different value for a shorter tie versus a longer tie, right? Um, and then the right uh, version of this would be inset to the left from the right edge about 20%. And again, this is just defining where that control point is. Once you have those two control points in place set by the height and the inset, the tie then sort of arcs up towards the control point and then flattens out and then arcs down towards the end. It never actually reaches the control point. It never actually reaches the height of the control point, I believe. I don't think it actually reaches the height. It comes very close. Um, but uh, yeah, the height and the inset is actually just setting the control points. The control points are then sort of defining the arc. Now again, you do have this option for the inset percent or to have a fixed inset. And when you do this, you can obviously see that your, your values are changing here. You have access to these numbers as opposed to access to these numbers. What I should say about the inset fixed version of this is that this is actually setting the inset to a set value, right? In this case, 0 0.02778. It's gonna be that value regardless of the length of the tie. So if it's a short tie, if it's a half an inch tie, the inset is gonna be 0 0.02778. If it's a three inch tie, the inset is gonna be 0 0.02778. The inset is gonna be exactly the same value from the edge of the tie, right? This kind of gives you a different type of result for your ties. What it does is essentially it makes the beginning of the arc exactly the same for all of the ties. And for the longer ties, you're going to end up with a really quick up and then it's going to really flatten out, which is a style of ties I've seen. If that's what you want to do, you can try out this fixed inset uh, setting here. Again, you'll just sort of get a quick up arc and then it'll be very flat for a long time and then a quick down arc to the end um, if you use the inset fixed. If you use the inset percentage, you're going to get a much more sort of generally rounded tie overall. And let me just say for all of these short, medium and long, essentially this is what happens. The height, if you have higher height for your control points, you're going to get more arc to your ties in general. If you have lower height, you're going to get less arc. If you have a larger inset value, whether it's percent or fixed, you're going to get a more gradual curve towards the peak of the arc. If you have a smaller inset percentage, you're going to have a sort of more abrupt curve towards the peak of the tie. So that's sort of what's going on with these four values here. Incidentally, you can set any of these values to negative, but I really wouldn't recommend that you get some really <laughs> weird looking ties like that. I mean, you can play around with that if you want, but uh, you know, you can put negative values here. And incidentally, you can change these differently. Like you can have a different height for the left and the right. And this will give you some really interesting asymmetrical ties. And I'm going to show you a, a little bit about this later because um, I think it can sometimes be useful if you're doing handwritten scores to actually make your ties slightly asymmetrical. So I'll demonstrate that in a, in a little bit. But let me just sort of demonstrate generally um, how this sort of works because I've been talking a lot about it and I just want to kind of show you how this works. So um, in this score on this first uh, system here, I do have these little S's and M's and L's just to indicate um, where, what ties are being used. So these are short ties, um, this is a medium tie, and this is a long tie, right? So we can start to play with those values. Let's actually, you know, let's look at the long tie, for example, and let's just make the height a lot higher. So let's make this like 3.5 um, for both, right? 
and just watch the long tie after I press OK and after I press Apply. You can see that that long tie just got much more arcier. Again, the higher those heights, the more arc you are going to have to those ties. Um, I'm just going to undo this. Let's see. Reset. Okay, and then watch this tie right here, this medium tie when I hit apply. I'm going back to the factory settings. You see it just shrink just a little bit more uh, flatter, right? Again, that's because of this interpolate height between short and long spans, right? That tie right here is probably just a little bit longer than one inch. So it's again, it's interpolating between the, the medium height and the long height. So when I change this height of the long tie, you know, it's just a little bit higher for that interpolation, right? If that makes sense. Let's see what happens if we change the height of the short tie. Let's make this uh, one, two. Let's make this one, two. Let's see what happens. This is going to give you some really funky. Yeah. <laughs> so all those short ties just got really, really loopy, especially the really short ones. It looks kind of ridiculous. Uh, let's reset again, hit apply. And then let me just demonstrate what the changes you can make with the inset, right? So 20%, again, if you look at the tie, it's probably right about here. That's probably where the control point is and right about here. But let's make this really small. Let's say, let's say 9%. Let's play 8%, right? And see what happens. Actually, let's do that for all of them. 8%, 8% and long, 8%, 8%. Okay, and apply. I don't know if you can see it, but it was very subtle. Like all of a sudden now the beginning of the tie sort of arcs very quickly and then it sort of flattens out a lot more. Uh, let's go back to the other way so you can see the difference. So I'm just going to reset and then watch all the ties very carefully as I hit apply. You can just see very subtly the, the arc is a little bit different. So yeah, that's kind of what the, the inset does. And let's just, you know, try what, see what happens with a fixed inset for all of them. Oh yeah, this, when you hit fixed, it's for all spans, that's right. So okay, apply. Yeah, and you can see with a fixed uh, inset style, especially with the longer ties, see how quickly, do I need to zoom in? Let me just zoom in a little bit more here. You can see how quickly the arc goes up and then it really flattens out and then quickly goes down, right? Or down and then up. Um, so yeah, so that's what those heights and inset values will do. Let's just reset everything back to square one, hit apply. All right, so this is our factory ties again. So let's continue on. Let's look at the next thing here, which is the tie thickness, right? This is literally the thickness of the tie, and you can definitely change this. And there is a left and a right thickness, right? And there's also this tip width thickness. Um, essentially what Finale is doing is it's going to taper from the left side down to the tip width. So the left side width is 0 0.02 inches. The tip width is 0 0.003 inches, right? So it's tapering somewhere around here, if you can see my cursor, from 0.2 inches, it's tapering down to uh, 0 0.003 inches, right? So we can make these a lot thicker. Let's make these 0 0.05 and see what that looks like. Apply. Yeah, that's a really way too thick, but it is tapering down to the same uh, tip thickness, right? Let's go back here reset um, and again you can change the tip width thickness there's not a whole lot of room to maneuver here but um, interestingly if you actually put the same value here let's just say 2083 so I'm actually making the tip width the same as the right and left width and hitting apply <laughs> you can see how you can get these sort of blocky looking ties with no taper at all so again not that that's a really useful thing to do but um, that's essentially what's going on here. Reset. So I mentioned that you can get some asymmetrical ties and uh, just bear with me. I'm going to set up some settings here um, uh, for the thickness and the short, medium, and long heights. So let's just see what uh, 0 0.02 for the left, 0 0.03. I'm just reading off some numbers that I was kind of experimenting with before. Um, I might fast forward this. So short height, 0.66. For the medium, we're going to set something different here. And again, for the long ties, I'm going to set something a little bit asymmetrical. This is going to be... All right, so you can see I have some, some asymmetricality all over the place in the heights and insets for the long, medium, and short ties. And then I also have some asymmetry here in the tie thicknesses between the left and right. I'm going to hit OK and hit Apply. And it's very subtle, but let me show you what this looks like up close. 
you can kind of see the ties are just a little bit like they're not exactly perfectly curved. There's, it's a little bit thicker on the right side than it is on the left side. You know, it's a little bit, the arc is shallower here and then deeper on the right side. Again, it's very subtle. It doesn't look that great when you have normal, like, you know, engraver font or uh, maestro font here, but I can imagine if you were using one of the uh, handwritten fonts, this might be a, a neat little trick to help it look slightly more handwritten. Incidentally, you can do the same things with slurs, and I've talked about that in the, the slur videos too. Um, so that's just another thing that you can do with these ties, which, by the way, is really unique to Finale. You cannot do this in Sibelius and Dorico. They will not let you do anything um, remotely like this in terms of making your ties or slurs um, asymmetrical. So for what it's worth, that's <laughs> a unique thing. But let's just for now reset, go back to normal. And then the last couple things I want to talk about in the tie contour windows, this is last two options for avoid staff lines by, and there's a value here and then this sub option in staff only. This is literally doing exactly that. It's preventing your ties from sort of, you know, lining up with your uh, your staff lines. If you look down here, you know, notice how the tie goes below. This tie arc is actually probably a little bit um, taller than it should be if, if the, uh, the staff lines weren't involved. But because this option is checked and because you're avoiding by this particular value, it's going to make sure that that tie just gets a little bit larger so that it avoids a staff line. Notice this one here is actually getting a little bit shorter to avoid this staff line, right? So it depends on the, the span, it depends on the height settings over here, um, but sometimes, you know, Finale will look at it and say, if I actually literally do what's gonna happen, actually, let's just uncheck this to see what it looks like. Yeah, you can see this tie is like literally overlapping with the bottom line. This one's getting very close. Um, this doesn't look good. It's it, it makes it hard to read. So that option to avoid the staff lines is actually really important. You can futz around with this value a little bit, but uh, you know this is I think this value is perfectly fine. Anything larger or shorter than that is going to start looking weird. And then in staff only. Um, this option should make it apply to ties only in the staff, but isn't it only ties that are in the staff that would need to have them avoid the staff lines? So again, this is one of those options that kind of mystifies me. I'm not even sure why checking or unchecking that makes a difference. And as far as I can tell in my experimentation, it actually doesn't make any difference. So. Um, that seems to be a weird um, vestigial option for something a long time ago, perhaps. So anyway, but that's what's going on with the avoid staff lines. Definitely keep this checked. Otherwise, your, your ties are going to be, you know, all up in the staff lines business, and it's just not going to look good. And then the last thing I'm going to say about this is that all of these settings can be individually changed on ties. So if you go into the special tools, go to the tie tool, and, you know, you you, you click in a measure to get here you can go to the edit menu here and you have all of these tie contour options so it's it, this is telling you that this is a short tie and this is the short height value and the short inset percentage so you can actually change the height just for this one particular tie you can change them asymmetrical just for this one particular tie there's other things you can do with the tie placement with the tie direction of course and then the break for time and key signature um, and the outer placement or inner placement, which I think I've talked about before, and even the avoid staff lines. So um, this tie alterations uh, uh, window for the special tools will actually you know, let you individually change some of those settings from the document options just for that single tie. So uh, lots of powerful uh, stuff that you can do here as well. All right. And I think that's it. We've literally talked about all of the options in the document options for ties and tie contour. So congratulations, you made it through. Hopefully I haven't completely confused you. I know that some of this stuff is a little bit complex, but um, perhaps I've cleared it up. At least that's my goal. So once again, thanks for watching. I'm going to try to do one more video um, on the Patterson uh, tie mover plugin. Uh, so that should be coming up next in the series. But uh, other than that, we are done with untangling ties. So once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you soon in the next video.